This whole vlog wouldn't have been possible without the TSA agent who let me cut through security because he liked my Chicago Jordan ones I was wearing on feet uh, while at Pearson Airport. I almost didn't make this trip at all, so very grateful for that. And boy oh boy, Ohio was hot. Here now in the Airbnb and I have like one room right here in my bedroom. It's like a shared house so it's uh, it's definitely a lot cheaper than Vancouver was that's for sure and I have my own privacy. So it is 7 15 p.m. right now and while I was eating dinner I found out that I have to do a COVID check-in the day before <laughs> the day before the tournament. So boy oh boy do I feel like an idiot because my bus that dropped me off in downtown Columbus Ohio here it was right here, so I was here earlier if I had just known. Look who we bumped into. We got the homies over from Manta, up in Toronto, and you guys just got your goodie bag. You buy anything or is this all the stuff that comes with it? This is what I bought. Oh, okay. Yo, I got some plushies and RC box. Sick, that's sick. It's at the Pokemon Center. Two map variations. Woo. This is one we get and they got one that they sell. So we got all the swag right here. I'll show you guys what's included in just a second. They have a shop here, like a Pokemon Center store. So unfortunately, they just closed off the shop right in front of me, but we do have a swag bag right here. So let me show you guys all the stuff you guys get just for being a competitor in the Pokemon North American International Championships. Quick ball right here that has the special North American International stamp. Competitor to Lanard right here. Jordan Shield starters right there. Grookey, Sobble, and uh, the last one's on the other side. Let's just grab stuff at random. Ooh, we have a uh, starter cap right here. That's pretty cool. Not bad. Oh, in the back, is there a special stamp? Oh, yes, we got the Play Pokemon badge right there. 2022 Pokemon Championships North America deck box. I messed with it. I messed with it. Sleeves right here as well. The same kind of uh, design, the same kind of theme going on. Got a special pin, the competitor pin. That is really dope. Ooh, you actually get two sets of sleeves. Very, very interesting. I was not expecting two sets of sleeves. Last but not least, we have a play mat right here. Let's just open it up and ooh, that's gonna look cool to flex this at locals. So I don't have any sleeves on me to protect this quick ball. So I'm gonna have to use one of these sleeves real quick and then throw it in the deck box for safekeeping. So even though the official Pokemon Center is closed, they actually have a bunch of vendors right here behind me. A bunch of different stores all came through with a bunch of stuff. We got collector's cash, we have Yeti gaming, a whole bunch of stores here. So I'm gonna get a little sneak peek of some of the stuff that they have and then we're gonna be hey oh yo <laughs> and then uh, we're gonna be shopping around and uh, I'll show you guys some of the stuff I actually played against that guy that just said what's up in uh, the local 2k tournament that happened like last week so uh, yeah let's check out some of these stores and see what's good Last time for Vancouver Regionals, I was running on four hours of sleep. It's about 10 p.m. right now, so I'm gonna try and get my deck figured out in the next hour and maybe get seven hours of sleep. Good morning, y'all. It is 7.32 a.m. and today is NAIC day number one. We're on our way to the event now, the convention center for NAIC day one. And uh, I'm gonna have to take this electric scooter right here because it is about a 20 minute electric scooter or a 55 minute walk or a 10 minute drive. So I think a nice scooter ride with some drum and bass music in the morning will put me in just the right competitive fun mood. So we just got through bag check. I am hyped. I have the biggest smile on my face underneath this mask. You guys don't even know. There's so much stuff to see here. Oh my God. Round 
one is about to start. They're about to announce it. We're playing against Brandon, and uh, he's decked out with the matching everything, all green. So he better be playing some great grass type deck, you know. Uh, that's what I'm hoping for. But best of luck, man. Very, very a tough loss at the end. The very first game, he got set up absolutely perfectly. I've never played against a Lilligan deck in my life, so it was also a learning curve. Second game, I got set up perfectly. Final game, he goes first. He gets set up nice, I go. I start with Arceus V-Star, two Arceus V-Stars in hand, with one Arceus V on my, my active. Draw into Professor's Research, my only out. Instead of playing it, I decided to go for the greedy play because I didn't think he could get three energies on his Lilligan in one turn. Bruh. I, I was wrong. He retreated with the capture energy, then used Flapple for 20 damage, and then uh, removes it from the active, and then Lilligan comes in for another 230, which killed my active, and I had nothing else on my bench. So, very, very tough round one loss. Round two is done. I had so much fun. Simon was such a pleasure to play against. He was super, super friendly. His deck was really cool. His entire deck was all one-offs. So like, you don't really see that ever. It was a lot of different moving parts. And so game two, my mill tank just came absolutely clutch, starting off with mill tank. And I wasn't sure if uh, it was gonna be the MVP of that game, but the last game, mill tank came clutch and it attacked pretty much all of his Pokemon. I'm absolutely starving. My stomach was like growling the entire matchup. So I'm gonna see if I can grab a quick bite to eat before round three starts. Round number three is done. We played against uh, Daniel's Darkrai deck. Daniel's Darkrai, that, that could be a good uh, gym leader name right there. Game one, I won and it was a pretty, I'd say it was pretty one-sided. Uh, I think he scooped just a couple prizes in. I got really set up really quickly. Darkrai needs a lot of setup. You need that board filled up. Game two, he ended up taking it. It was really, really close, but dude, when you combo those Malevolent Charges, uh, Galarian Moltres, and uh, the tools that you can find with Darkrai's V-Star ability, combos go off and it feels really, really good for the Darkrai player. So he took the very close game two. Game three, I just ran with it. I just, I got set up super fast, as you saw with the final board state. I had Arceus V-Star set up with energies, Probath with energies. So, uh, so yeah, Daniel just kind of got really unlucky on the last game, but still a really fun series. And one really fun thing that happened during the match is Neither of us ever got a mulligan the entire games, and he did the professor's research with an empty hand, so we gave him the we gave him the high five mid game. Now it's time to grab some lunch, and I am starving. We have the exact same food as we did in Vancouver, Subway, but it was Subway Express, so it was very limited in terms of like how yummy this will taste. Uh, we got barbecue Lay's though. This is the best Lay's. If you choose any other Lay's flavor, I, I'm unfriending you. About an hour to eat before we go to get in for round four. I'm excited. Two one. Pretty good start to today, and uh, no slow players yet. Crossing my fingers, we don't have any of those. I'm ready to call a judge though. Table 101, playing against Anil. Lovely. Anil goes to our locals, and he got ninth place at Vancouver Regionals. Well, I got like 130, so this should be a fun game. We're pulling up to the table. It is Battle of the Toronto Mandems. Battle of the Toronto Mandems, here we go. All right, so. Loser, uh, actually winner, winner gets to keep the- The crutch? The crutch, yeah. Loser has to walk home crippled? Yeah. Right, right. I mean, <laughs> this is a new segment that we're doing just for you. Okay, it's on. So before we start, yeah. I need to do a quick deck profile with you so you can walk us through the deck. <laughs> <laughs> just, just for like 10 seconds, Just for like 10 seconds, yeah. quick time? All right, all all right watch this, watch this. All right, today we're playing Flaffy, all right? Ooh. Cause I don't care about my life. Oh. And I don't care about this tournament. Well, golden too, like the bling. I got three You're, golden flappies. Are you flappies. doing the worlds already? I am, yes. So he is here for the flex. He's here just to deflect flappies. I'm here flappies. for fun. This is from Manta Trading. Book it, Manta Trading. Manta great, Trading. great store. Yep. Buy your stuff. Uh, that's my 10 second deck profile. All right, awesome. It worked. We'll find out if it did uh, pay off or not. <laughs> oh, divisions, you may be getting around for. You may be
Round number four is done. We played against Anil, as you guys know. Really fun matchup, and uh, I gotta say, that, that those games were nail biters. The first one, I hardly skated by with the win. I just happened to put a big charm on my Pikachu, and that was the reason I kind of won the game. Game two was super close, but uh, yeah, Anil ended up getting the W, and uh, there was only like three minutes left for the last game, so we were like, nah, let's just not play it out, let's just tie, so yeah. Good game, bro. What's up? Good luck with the rest of your tournament. You so we currently have seven points, and we need 19 points in total to make it to day two. I'm still very hopeful. We still have pretty good odds at potentially making it in. And uh, just playing against Anil was really fun. It was it was really nice playing against somebody I played at tournaments when I first started playing the game. And so after we talked about it a little bit, I said I think I definitely felt like I'm, I'm better than I, I was back then. And Anil agreed with me, like he told me my sequence was better. You know, it feels really good to, to be toe to toe with a like really high tier level player. Good time to go out on. So. Round five coming up next. I haven't played against the Mew or a Palkia yet. I want to fight Mew. Mew is an auto win, okay? Mew is an auto win. I'm telling you now. If I lose to a Mew, I'm gonna cry. Round five is about to start, and we have five more rounds. We got five, six, seven, eight, nine. And of those five games I have to play, in order to qualify for day two, I have to win four of the five games. I can afford one loss slash draw, but I need four wins. So we need to go on a juicy win streak, okay? That's what we gotta do right now. Jonathan211, table 71. All right, so remember how I said I wish I could play a Mew? I haven't played any Mews all day. Well, I played a Mew, and I almost got turn one Meloetta the very first game, starting off with the Crobat. Bruh. And it was just, it was, it was a headache. He genesected three times and had Rose Tower. He couldn't find the Elisa Sparkle, and I had a huge, huge comeback. It was amazing. It was, it was it was amazing. And then game two was rough. I started off with the Pumpkaboo Ooh. and I had Crobat in hand. So Pumpkaboo got turn one KO'd with the uh, the Mew of all people that killed it. My Crobat, I, I managed to use my Crobat to the best of my ability, get the choice belts. Mar need more Crobats, quick balls, and, and I was just rolling. I had one prize card left, but by the time he had five, I'm so happy after that matchup. My deck is like built to fight Mews with ease. So if I were to lose on a turn one Meloetta, the very first game, after talking about how much I want to fight a Mew so I could beat them. I want to fight Mew. Mew is an auto win, okay? Mew is an auto win. We clutched the win. We got four more games to go. I just need to win three more games to make day two. So we have some time to kill before round six. I'm gonna go check out the main stage and watch Pokemon on the big screen. They have the casters right there. And wow, this is such a nice setup. Like compare this to Vancouver regionals, that's baby food. Being someone who is a very nerdy guy and loves like equipment and technology and stuff like that. And I went to school for journalism. So I love everything when it comes to the broadcast, broadcast industry. It is so cool to see like the nationals behind the scenes stuff, the setup right there. Like it's right there in Vancouver. It was hidden behind like curtains, like their Wizard of Oz. But here you could actually see it all go down. And my man says, Pokemon, oh, hey! <laughs> Round six is gonna start very soon. I really have to go pee. And I also really need some coffee or some caffeine. I'm running on four hours of sleep with zero caffeine in me. Ooh. I don't know how I'm surviving and how I'm able to still win games. Getting some fresh air right now. Well, convention fresh air, if you want to call it that. And uh, I'm used to paying like $2 Canadian for these at the Dollarama. Here, it's like, seven bucks after tax in Canadian. Ooh. Painful, but on the bright side, you can't bring drinks inside of the convention center. And at the same time too, this is resealable. So if I were to go to Starbucks, I couldn't bring the drink into the event. So this is honestly like a, a blessing in disguise, just a, a very expensive blessing in disguise. All right, so some really bad news. I'm honestly devastated right now. <clears throat> so I was just hanging out on the mat here talking with people, talking with friends. And I was having such a good time just talking and vibing. And I didn't even realize it, but the next round started without me. And um, I get to the table and I... And I get to the table and the slip isn't there and my opponent's not there. And I just found out that I got disqualified from round six. So I got the round loss which is devastating. I'm, I'm actually so heartbroken right now. Um, so now I have to win the next three rounds, back to back. I had room for one loss or, or one tie, but now that is gone. So, so now I have to go three, three wins in a row. So now it's just like, man, my heart hurts so much right now. All right, 
Um, now I have like 40 minutes now to kill. I think I just missed the 10 minute mark too because I was looking at people's like decks and, and prize cards and I saw a lot of people still had five, six prize cards left. So I must have just missed the 10 minute mark. So if I just stopped having a good time talking to friends for like a couple more minutes and I went to my table and played the damn game. Woo! Oh my gosh, man. Oh, this is painful. To praise the light living in the dark Take your time, we'll meet again To speak your truth, hoping it's a lie you can't Five more minutes until the next round and uh, check out these trophies, man. These trophies are really cool. But the funny thing is, let's see if you guys can spot it. Let's see if you guys can spot it. So the thing that is wrong with these trophies right here is usually on a podium they go first, second, third. However, they put the second place trophy at the top. What the heck? Round seven is going to start pretty soon. There's a couple more games I have to wrap up in overtime. And uh, right down here is actually Ian Rob and Azul GG, two of the top players playing right now. I know Ian Rob won a regional recently. I actually started using one of his decks as like a base for one of my lists. And everyone knows Azul in the Pokemon scene. One of the top content creators on YouTube for Pokemon stuff. And uh, yeah, there's like a legit, like there's literally a crowd all watching. Round number seven, here we go. It's do or die time. We have to win three in a row. It's hard taking that, no show loss. But hey, what's up? Last round to go. Oh, wait, last round to go. Last, last, uh... Oh man, my, my brain. I have a headache, bro. I'm fried right now. My brain is fried. Let's head over to the stable and play some Pokemon. Here we go. Good luck. Right, best of luck. GG's man, take it easy. Man, oh man, what a way to go out. Out of all the decks to lose to for my uh, streak, I needed to go three wins in a row. My deck, which is supposed to counter it, I lost. I lost to Palkia V-Star. He played a really, really good game. Game one, he uh, scooped pretty quickly. And then game two, I just couldn't get set up either, so I had to scoop. And then game three was our nice, like, proper, game. I ended up mulliganing three times, so he got a juicy head start with the mulligans and uh, I just really couldn't get set up. I started with flying Pikachu V. I had to basically research away my hand, my, all my supporters and everything and just knowing that I lost my room for error, my one loss, my one tie, I could have, you know, to, to keep playing for day two. Now I'm out of contention for day two. It's painful. We got two more games left to go for the day. We're gonna play them out, you know? The last two games especially are like always the most friendly too because we have nothing to lose. You know, everyone's just playing for fun. No one I'm gonna play for the rest of the day is gonna have a chance at day two. So there'll be some fun, friendly Pokemon. Really close matchup against a Palkia Ice Rider player. I believe round one, he beat me. No, I beat him. Round two, he beat me. And then on to round number three, it was a really, really super close back and forth matchup. And it ended up going into overtime and I had two prizes left. He had all six still. All I needed to do was boss's orders for game. However, he used Roxanne and oh my gosh, that Roxanne was the biggest Roxanne he could have asked for. It sent away my boss's orders back into my deck. And I had two more bosses in deck. I had a couple quick balls and a curl bat in my deck as well. Poke gear as well. So off the two cards from the Roxanne, I had a Thunder Energy and a Arceus V-Star. I draw for turn and it is a Marnie, so I'm clearly not going to win. I use the Marnie. Marnie grabs me Poke gear. I use the Poke gear, take the top seven cards of my deck, look for supporter, and uh, I add it to my hand. So I lay the seven out on the table and I was like, all right, this one is going to be boss. I turn it around and sure enough, it was boss's orders. Bruh. So even the judge was laughing right beside us because he saw everything go down. I really think I could have won if it went past overtime. Some of his turns on the third game took a little longer than they should have. Also a big reason I lost game two was I completely forgot what the card Starmie does. Now if you don't know what Starmie does for two water energies, it does 50 damage for every energy on your opponent's side. I pretty much had game the following turn, but I forgot this was a thing that was an attack. So after I attacked with Arceus, I loaded up my Crobat 
and all of a sudden I have six energies on board. Bruh. So he went from being able to two hit KO me to one hit KO me for the last two prizes that he needed. So Ooh. I played myself, but yo, it's been a long, long day and I have a massive, massive headache. So game number nine is done and it was a super, super close matchup. I ended up taking the uh, the first matchup, I believe, or they did. Either way, it became a score of 1-1. And in the very final game, I needed a cancel, cancel in Cologne and a boss's orders to win. And I professors researched into a Cologne and three boss's orders. However, it was on my final turn where, as you saw, I had one prize card left. And I had all six to still pick up. So if I played a little faster, uh, you know, then I probably easily would have, would have won because I had just one more prize card to go, which is unfortunate, but that's how it goes when they have the time constraints here. We ended up with a tie. Now, next up is going to be the results after the nine rounds of play. So I'm going to give you guys my like official tournament standings, like score, and I'll give you guys my unofficial one, which will include like if I didn't have the, the round one no-show loss and uh, the, the ties, that should have been a win. So overall, I think I played great. I only lost, I think, two games in total out of the eight that I played. So I am super, super happy with how I performed. So uh, yeah, we're gonna go check out the standings in a second. But if you guys are enjoying this video and wanna see more tournament vlogs, I did do a Vancouver regionals vlog, which I highly recommend you guys check out. I'll leave a link down below. But yeah, let's head over to the standings. One last thing before we check out the standings. I didn't bring my complete deck to the tournament. I am missing one collapsed stadium. I know it sounds really bad, but that Collapse Stadium would have helped immensely in the Palkia matchups, the two that I played, and the Blissey matchups. Because the second they had Path to the Peak on the board, and I had Pump Kaboo in the prizes, I pretty much couldn't use my star, uh, V-Star power the entire game. So, enough reminiscing of what could have been. Let's go check out the final standings. So, officially, we ranked 237 with the 333. That is our ranking. Hit that like button, click on screen right now to watch my Vancouver Regionals vlog, and uh, subscribe if you want to see more content like this. I'll catch you guys next time. Peace out.